Well, firstly, thank you so much for, for doing this um, interview, Jade. I really, really appreciate it. I was saying a minute ago to you before I started recording, I've got a huge amount of respect for what you're doing. You've obviously got a massive social media platform of like over 2 million people following you. Not a lot of people in your situation would promote veganism as much as you do. So thank you so much for doing that. And on that note, it will be good if you just kind of talked about just very briefly your kind of vegan journey. So I have been vegetarian since I was about four years old. Uh, as soon as I knew meat was an animal, uh, I threw a huge hissy fit and never ate it again. Uh, and then about five years ago, um, when I was really fighting veganism, I was starting to learn about it, but I really did not want to give up my eggs. I didn't want to give up my cheese. Uh, I was scrolling through Instagram and I came across a PETA video um, that showed behind the scenes uh, footage of what happens uh, uh, in egg farming. I saw it, I was completely traumatized and I went vegan right away that day. And then I just kind of started researching a lot after that. And uh, it's been five years and I've never turned back. Wow, yeah. Let's um, let's talk about your Instagram just really briefly. As I mentioned before, you've got a massive, you know, platform there. Um, has this been a big part of your life since you went vegan or like when did you set it up? You know, I don't even really know. It's been years. I used to run the social media for um, my companies. So I used to have a nightclub and restaurants and I didn't even have my own personal Instagram because believe it or not, I hate taking photos of myself. It sounds so funny because that's like what I've done my whole life. I've been a model. That's how I've made all of my living up until, you know, the last couple of years. And um, so I didn't start one right away. I was a slow starter. And even when I did, it was like, pictures of dogs and pictures of this. And I didn't really um, understand it at the beginning, but I've probably been uh, really active on it for about three years. And then as far as like um, the vegan activism and really getting into the food and the recipes and teaching people, probably only the last like maybe year to two years. Um, as I've kind of become more educated, you know, I had to sell all of my leather shoes and all of my, you know, fancy designer handbags and um, transition my whole entire household into cruelty free. And uh, I don't really like uh, preaching something or talking about something unless I'm a living it properly how I'm telling other people to, but also to be educated on it. So I started kind of re-educating people, um, I would say probably about two years ago, really active on social media. Yeah, definitely. And I noticed in the bio of your Instagram, it says you've done the, the plant-based nutrition course of eCornell. Um, I quickly just wanted to say actually um, that we are doing a, a giveaway. So we're giving one member of the PBN audience the opportunity to do that course worth uh, it's like twelve hundred, over twelve hundred dollars, isn't it? We're giving them the opportunity to do that for free. So if you're watching this, because um, I'll probably upload it as just a normal, you know, interview, um, it is gonna. The competition is gonna still be rolling until like probably March, end of March, when we're getting or beginning of April when we'll announce the winners. It'll probably be yeah, it'll be sometime in April. So anyway, if you're watching this, check out the link down below if you want to win a chance to do that course, which is headed up by T. Colin Campbell at E. Cornell. You can do it anywhere um, in the world. You just because it's over the internet. And yeah, so I just wanted I wanted to plug that really quickly. But um, let's talk about that, Jade. When did you become uh, interested in the you know the health side of things, and what kind of made you do that course? Mm -hmm. So. I really found that at the beginning, I was a little naive. I was promoting veganism and expected all smiles and happiness. And I got a lot of people um, fighting back with me on a lot of things. And some things, you know, especially with what happens to animals, I was very educated on that um, aspect of it. And I was fairly educated on the environmental impact side of it. Uh, the health impact, you know, I knew that it was not good for you. I knew it was bad for you. And I knew that, you know, it caused heart disease and cancer, but I didn't really know why. I didn't know the details of it. And so I was getting a lot of these questions and I did my own research and I read studies and I read books and I watched documentaries, but I really wanted to take it to the next level and have, you know, uh, a really good knowledge base. And so when people asked me questions, I could answer with certainty, not like, oh, well, one time I read this article, like I wanted to be properly educated on the biological side of it. And so I took the plant-based nutrition course and it was 
awesome. I highly suggest it to anyone who's interested in nutrition. Um, it teaches you a lot about uh, disease um, and how it's caused and how it grows and how it kills you essentially. Uh, and it does teach you a lot about the environmental impact as well as uh, the government and lobbying impact of the meat and dairy industry, which is just insane. Um, and so, yeah, it was, it was a great course. Mm -hmm. I just got a couple of quick questions to ask you um, for the, the model series that, that, that we're doing. Um, actually, though, before I ask those kind of specific questions, would you call yourself a model or like would you say fitness enthusiast or bodybuilder? Because I know you've been on the, the Playboy like front pages and stuff um, in the like 2007 or 2008. I looked at your Wikipedia before this. So like, you, I guess, yeah, would you say you're a model or or fitness what would you call yourself uh probably none of those things i mean i don't consider myself to be a fitness model um i really just try uh, my very best to educate people uh on the health aspect of how important the plant-based diet is and of course how it coincides with you know your workouts and everyone wants to be you know in good shape and look good but you know that doesn't really come unless you're healthy on the inside as well um so I don't think I'd categorize myself in any of those <laughs> things. I'd like to maybe be like a, you know, um, an educator more than anything on the nutrition aspect. Mm -hmm. And can you just explain quickly some of the beneficial effects that you felt when you went on a, a healthier sort of plant-based diet in terms of did your skin improve, like your physical appearance, sleep, mentally, like what are some of the beneficial effects? Um, a little bit of everything. Uh, the funniest thing is uh, probably six months after I went vegan, um, I had people telling me that I looked younger. Like people I hadn't seen in like five, six years were like, you look younger than when I saw you, you know, at this, you know, whatever model or event or whatever it was. And it had been five, six years. And I, I really feel like it does uh, make you feel and look younger. It, it's really, really helpful for your skin all around. Um, dairy is just so bad for your skin, like just the worst. And so stopping that really, uh, made my skin a lot better. Um, I for sure had more energy. Uh, my hair grew faster, um, better sleep and mostly my body holds its shape a lot easier. So if I get super busy and I'm traveling around and I don't get to work out for like three weeks, um, I stay the same now that I'm vegan. <laughs> Before I would be like, oh, I could tell I would start getting, you know, softer. I would start gaining weight because of what I ate. But um, being on the vegan diet really helps you maintain that a lot easier. <laughs> you got a vegan baby in the background, right? <laughs> you have a vegan baby in the background that just woke up from his nap. <laughs> I think we're gonna be speaking to her as well. Um, but uh, I can't remember her social media handle, but she's bringing up her, uh, baby vegan right that's pretty cool she's been vegan actually longer than i have been um i think she's closer to 10 years um and yeah her baby is vegan she's breastfeeding vegan um and we've learned a lot about um you know uh vegan pregnancy vegan breastfeeding and raising your baby vegan he's very happy and healthy and chunky and super strong um but yeah, it's been a it's been a learning process, of course, because you don't really know these things until it happens to you, and you have to start <laughs> researching and really learning. But in the learning process of it, it just reiterated the fact of how important it is to be plant based while you're pregnant and while you're breastfeeding, because the toxins and all of the terrible stuff that comes from meat and dairy. Um, is really bad for the baby while you're pregnant and while you're breastfeeding. So, um, and I'm so jealous of him. Like, I wish that I was raised vegan from a baby. I'm like so mad that I had all those years of gross milk and cheese and all that nasty stuff going into my body. But yes, you're going to be talking to her uh, for sure. She'll have a lot more to say on that topic. <laughs> I just want to ask um, about relationships. Um, actually, before I do that, um, let's just talk about one of the statistics I saw recently. I noticed that over 80% of the vegan community are actually female. And I just want to explore that with you. What is it do you think that means that men have such a, like, a strong affinity to meat? Yeah, I think that 
women um, are more empathetic to, you know, humans and animals. I think that that plays a part in it. Um, but unfortunately, I think the biggest part of it is just the marketing that has been done um, by the meat and dairy companies since we were born. You know, it's been happening since I was born. I'm going to be 32 this year. Um, they teach you from a very young age through advertisements and, you know, commercials and magazines and, and this and the other that to be strong and to be tough, you have to eat meat and eat your steak and drink your milk. And I think it's really um, just ingrained, especially in males that like to be a strong masculine male, you have to eat your meat and potatoes with your cheese and your milk. And, and it's unfortunate because obviously that stuff is not true. And we have tons of male bodybuilders and UFC fighters and hockey players and basketball players and everything that are improving in their sport and being plant-based. But I just think that through the media, it's been ingrained in men that it's not manly to be vegan vegetarian when indeed I think it's the complete opposite. Mm -hmm. And do you have a message for, you know, the typical gym guy that goes to the gym loads and thinks, you know, they need loads of animal products and meat, dairy, fish, eggs to kind of build muscle. Uh, what would you say to that kind of person? Uh, you think you need way more protein than you do. It's actually doing you harm. Um, and I, you know, I read this one thing that's like eating meat for your protein is like drinking Coca-Cola for your potassium. Like you don't need to take in all of that uh, negative uh, energy to get your protein when you can get it from clean sources like plants. Um, and also, let me just tell you, if you are a vegan dude out there, you just have such a good chance with so many hot ass vegan girls <laughs> that that in itself should be enough reason. You don't care about your, the animals. You don't care about the environment. You don't care about anything. That's totally fine. I don't need you to care. But girls find it super attractive and the male vegan pool is pretty small and most vegan girls want to date vegan guys so for that reason alone you should probably just go vegan <laughs> would you date a a meat eater or an omnivore um everyone i've ever dated unfortunately has been a meat eater but um i think it's what is important to me when i'm dating someone is that they're open to learning and open to change um, the guys that I, and I don't allow meat or dairy in the house. So when I live with guys, they know that, you know, there's, there's never any of that inside the house. But um, as long as people are open to learning, I have, I was a vegan my whole life, you know, people don't know what it is. So I can't really judge people from the get go if they don't understand everything. But if there was a guy that I met that was like, oh, no, I have to hunt and eat meat and, da, 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 and I don't care I would absolutely never talk to that person again <laughs> but as long as they're open to like making changes and, and learning and educating themselves on it then um, that works for me. That's a little bit surprising to be honest because um, well given you know how passionate you are about vegan stuff. <laughs> I think it's uh, for me like I said as long as people know because most of the, the people that I know are guys that I meet um, when I start to talk about vegan things, they just had no idea. You know, they had no idea about what happens in the factory farming. They have no idea about what happens uh, or what it causes to the environment. And most importantly, the health aspect of it. So I try to not judge people on what they already know. And uh, as long as they're open to becoming educated and making the transfer, uh, I think if once I was dating someone for long enough, if they knew everything and they still ate me, I would probably be out. <laughs> but at the beginning, you know, it's just important to me that they're open-minded. Cool. And I just want to ask you about like tips and stuff. So if um, we're going to do a video titled something like fitness, mod fitness models of real um, tips about their lifestyle, something like what well, it will be like that. I know you don't, you're not, you don't want to be called a model, but as an educator, like what are some of your top tips for if somebody came up to you and is like, I want a body like yours, like what, what would you say? Cut out mean dairy from the get go. That is your worst enemy. Um, that amount of fat and hormones and everything is not good for you. You're fighting an uphill battle if you're trying to be healthy by eating fish or chicken or, or egg whites, just cut out all of that stuff to start. Um, and then if you're already vegan or, you know, you're part of, part of the way there, 
Uh, the more vegetables, the better. Uh, the more fruit, the better. I always tell people you cannot pile up your plate with enough vegetables, like just go crazy. Um, and that carbs are your friends. Now, complex carbohydrates, sorry for the screen baby. <laughs> Vegan babies, he wants in on this interview. He wants to- I feel like you might want some carbs. <laughs> See, he loves his carbs. Um, complex carbs are good for you. It's the simple carbs that you want to avoid. And uh, that's kind of something that I get. A lot of girls will DM me on Instagram and say, hey, uh, I went vegan, but I'm having a really hard time because I don't want to eat a lot of carbs because I'm going to gain weight. And that's like the biggest myth. I'm like, no, go carb crazy. You're fine. If you're doing, you know, quinoa and, and lentils and uh, wild rice and, um, you know, oatmeals and even like apples and stuff like that, that are carbohydrates. Those are good for you. Those are not going to make you fat. The carbs that have given carbs a bad name are the simple carbs, which are like sugar. And that's like eating processed foods. Like you're eating Twinkies or white bread or bleached rice. Like you want to avoid those things. And that's my number one tip. And a lot of people probably look at your your social media stuff, you know, the, the modeling photos, the photos gone viral and they probably think like, wow, she probably goes to bed every night really, really hungry. She starves herself, stuff like that. What would you say <laughs> to those people? Uh, if you follow my Vegan Jade story, you absolutely know that I am never hungry. I eat so much food. Um, actually, when I go out sometimes with people, they're like, uh seriously like you eat more than most people and I'm like yeah I know it's kind of terrifying people don't realize but when you're eating the right foods you can eat a lot so I am never hungry um I don't deprive myself of anything um I just really try to stick to real foods and as much unprocessed stuff as I can and that I just eat as much as I want Another question I wanted to ask was about the misconception that there seems to be with the vegan diet people that omnivores think a vegan diet is like really, really expensive. Is it possible to eat clean? I hate that phrase, but is it possible to eat healthy on a budget? Of course it is. I mean, it can be expensive, just like eating anything can be expensive. If you're shopping for all of your stuff at Whole Foods, um, even though now Whole Foods has done a price drop, so everything's getting cheaper. But before, if you were shopping everything at Whole Foods and, uh, you know, buying the artisan vegan cheeses and stuff, it can get expensive. But, you know, fruits and vegetables, rice, all that kind of stuff is not expensive. So you just have to kind of pick and choose and uh, pick and choose where you shop. Like I go get my organic produce all that I can at like Ralph's and then I'll go to Whole Foods for the things that I can't get. I don't necessarily go to like the Air One or the most expensive grocery store um, for the bulk stuff. So really just going to the proper markets to get um, your fruits and veggies. And if there's farmer markets close to you, that always helps. I'd love to go to farmer's markets and um, imperfect produce is like another thing I absolutely am obsessed with. I don't know if you've heard of it, but um, it's inexpensive and they deliver to your door and it's all the like uh, fruits and veggies that the grocery stores won't buy because they have like a little misshaped piece of it or whatever, but they're perfectly fine. Um, and that really helps with uh, food waste, which is a big problem here in America. Um, and it also helps support local farmers, but then it's also really inexpensive and it comes right to your door. So I'm a big fan of that one as well. So Cool. Well, I think that's it. Thank you so much for doing this interview. I know you got something um, to do pretty soon. So um, yeah, I really appreciate it. And for the people watching this, don't forget the eCornell plant-based nutrition course. If you want to learn more about pl um, plant-based nutrition, then you can win a free ticket and bursary um, if you just pop your email address into the link below. So check it out, it's in the description. And we'll announce the winner in a few months in like end of, yeah, it'll be probably early April, sometime around then. But yeah, thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more. See you soon. Currently, I'm prepping for my bikini competition. For me, the one thing that absolutely made sense was I'm going to be vegan. I love animals so much and it, it really hurts my heart that people are so mean to them. Dairy is just 
so bad for your skin. My whole body just, it just leans right out. People started asking me, uh, oh, have you been working out? And I'm like, I actually haven't been working out. You want to look like me? Ask me, what do you eat every day? My daily diet varies a lot. I'm going to let you know the truth about what we really eat in a day. <laughs>